Hello, it's me, Count Darkula, and I really, really like villains in video games. I'm serious. If you ask me who my favorite character in a game series is, more often than not, it's a villain, or THE villain, or just some entertaining douchebag. Like, my favorite character of the first Danganronpa is Byakuya. Cuz fuck that guy! He's the worst! He's such an asshole! But Danganronpa needed a good asshole, and Byakuya Togami is a good asshole. That may seem like an odd sentiment, but it's a common one. People love a good villain. Ask one of these people what makes a good video game villain, and they'd probably answer you one or more of these. Now these are all great, and correct, and I love them just as much as the next pink iridescent stick figure, but we're talking about video game villains here. I argue that to create a good video game villain, you don't really need any of this. All you need is a good boss fight and Tim. Obviously this doesn't apply to every game. Some games don't have combat, some games don't have boss fights. In this video, I just want to highlight what makes video game villains different from villains in other forms of media. To do that, I'd like to... Whew, that's a crack. To do that, I'd like to revisit something I said in my Metroid Prime video. On a conceptual level, it's because you want to fight Ridley, and you play the entire game knowing you're gonna fight the fucker at some point. The game doesn't build up the fight, you do. You should watch that video, by the way. Neil deGrasse Tyson told me he really liked it. In a movie, it's awesome when the hero faces the villain in the climax of the film. But while it's happening, the viewer is just a passive observer. In video games, the player is the one holding the controller and experiencing everything. This means two things. Where in a movie, you have a climactic showdown, in games, you have boss fights. Firstly, boss fights against the villains are really important and play a huge role, especially ones against main villains, so they must be done right. Secondly, in a movie, the main character is the one that's having the fight, and they have their own reasons for doing so. In games, these motivations must be transferred to the player for the epic moments to have any weight to them. One of the most crucial ingredients in boss fights against main villains, aside from the fight itself being fun, well-designed, and climactic, is that the player themselves actually wants to fight them. For this reason, games very often deploy a genius tactic that I like to call the you motherfucker moment. What's that, Dark Fry Sensei? I hear you ask. Well, it's right there in the name. The you motherfucker moment is any moment or moments in a story where the villain does something that makes the player go... You motherfucker. I don't just mean whenever they do something evil, by the way. It's a bit of an umbrella term. They're also not unique to video games, but they're much more noticeable and prominent in games because they are the moments that make the player want to fight the villain. The feeling they give the player is much stronger than in other forms of media because they are designed to push the player's buttons and target their frustrations directly. Imagine you're making a game, and you have this really cool villain, and this awesome concept for this final boss fight with them, or penultimate fight, or what have you. And you're like, I want this to be the hypest fight that ever hyped. All you have to do is get in the player's head, give them a little nudge, make them say, you motherfucker. Do that, and the player will hype up the fight themselves. And I promise you, 
Nothing you can do can hold a candle to the hype the player's own brain generates if you just guide them to it. A smart game designer will make the player do half their job for them. Not, not in the way that the game is like incomplete or unfinished or not good, just the uh, game designer leads the player to create their own experience and form their own story arc. Anyway, the you motherfucker moment can take many forms. It could be the villain doing something really evil or something really badass. It could be the villain saying a particularly powerful line, making a shocking reveal, even an amazing or intimidating design. Literally the day I wrote this script, Nintendo revealed the new Bowser's Fury trailer and showed off the sheer awesomeness that is God Slayer Bowser that made everyone lose their shit. Point is, it doesn't have to be you motherfucker. It could be you motherfucker. To avoid wordiness and add some flair, for the rest of this video, I will be using the you motherfucker moment and its acronym TIM interchangeably. Now, let's look at some examples. Let's go back to our good friend Ridley. First of all, Ridley is one of those villains who's so iconic that if you know who he is and what he did, just his existence itself is a Tim. Even if you have no clue who Ridley is, Metroid Prime does a great job showing how intimidating and dangerous he is right from the beginning. Ridley is a huge metal space lizard. Samus chases after him, but he escapes. Pretty good Tim. The important part, though, is that the game never shows you Ridley again, except one little reminder in Fendrana Drifts. After establishing that Ridley is in this game, that he is a threat you are pursuing and must fight eventually, the game just leaves it and lets the suspense just stew in the player's head for the entire game. That's why it works so well. Sometimes, a good Tim doesn't even need build-up to support it. The payoff can be instant and still do the trick. I've been playing through Final Fantasy VII Remake recently, and it did something that seriously impressed me. Mild spoilers for that game incoming, so skip to the time on the TV if you want to avoid them. Final Fantasy VII Remake pulls off a Tim to boss fight any percent speedrun. I'm talking about the encounter with Rufus Shinra near the end of the game. Up until this point, there was no mention of Rufus. However, you quickly learn that he is the boss of the Turks who have been causing lots of trouble in the story and kidnapped Aerith. Plus, he makes his entrance by destroying the only way of escape you have and almost killing your party. Now that's a great Tim right there. And then, you fight him solo as Cloud, and he's probably the best boss fight in the game. It's such a satisfying encounter. Boom! Look at these splits! Can't beat them! Gold split! Rainbow splits! Plus, he does this. So fucking awesome, jeez. A good Tim and a satisfying boss fight is the bare minimum needed to make a great video game villain. Video game villains can be really simple but still work really well. That's another thing that makes games unique as a medium. There is one franchise though that takes the concept of Tim and runs with it. There will be spoilers for both mainline No More Heroes games incoming, and they've been re-released recently on the Switch, so time's on the TV if you want to skip. No More Heroes is really good at quick but satisfying Tims. The bosses are all weird, colorful characters, but only get one short introductory cutscene before they fight you and die. So they do a good job of throwing Tims in there. There is one exception in the first game, though. A boss that actually has build-up. 
the secret final boss, Henry Cooldown. I think we can all agree that Henry is awesome. He's the only boss character that appears more than once, and by that I mean twice. The first is the you motherfucker moment, and it's a damn good one. Travis is about to fight the fifth ranked assassin, Let's Shake, this huge machine with a brain. And during this long, suspense building activation sequence, this happens. Travis touchdown, is it not? Henry just stole your target. You're an assassin. This is a big deal. Travis wants to fight him because he stole his mark, and the player wants to fight him because A, that motherfucker just stole my boss fight, and B, he is clearly fucking awesome. This is a great Tim. In fact, it's so good that Travis himself calls him Mr. Sir Henry motherfucker, he just jetted! At the end of the game, you fight Henry Sir Henry motherfucker cooldown in a motel parking lot. Two edgy anime sword weaves with beam katanas duking it out, and the song that's playing is amazing, and it's called We Are Finally Cowboys. It's so cool, I love it when game songs have meaningful titles. This is one of my favorite final battles ever. It's so simple in its execution, but it's exactly what this game needs. It's the peak of everything that makes No More Heroes awesome. Goichi Suda made a game full of memorable, unique boss characters, each with their own quirks and moments that made them special and have their own kind of buildup all topped off with a culmination of all those techniques for a true golden ticket, an epic finish of a boss fight. The fans loved it. So naturally, when it came time to make a sequel, Goichi Suda did what any good, sane game designer would do, and for its final showdown, did the exact opposite. Jasper Bad Jr. lives in infamy. He checks every box of a bad villain and boss fight. His design is dumb, he's super annoying, his fight is not fun and just frustrating. He tells you that he killed Henry, Shinobu, and Sylvia, but later it turns out that he was just fucking with you and they show up. He literally fakes his you motherfucker moment. Thing is, it's deliberately designed this way. The story is about how killing people and shallow revenge shouldn't feel good. Which, you know, a lot of games do. Not many of them though weaponize the hype the player feels to use it against them. Whether this is a good thing or not for the game itself is debatable. Cause even if you design a bad boss fight on purpose, what you're left with at the end of the day is a bad boss fight. A bad final boss fight. Wait a second. You're already here. You might as well keep fighting. It's not happening, brother. I can't be associated with that travesty. I mean, I've got standards for fuck's sake. It's just really interesting to consider. Even the player's excitement and expectations can be tools at the designer's disposal. Video games are fucking awesome! Right around here is the point the people who wanted to avoid spoilers skip to. So hello people who haven't played No More Heroes, please do that thing. And not just because they're good, fun games either. Boy. No More Heroes is one fascinating franchise. For many, fuckhead, many reasons. I should like, make a video on that. Anyway, uh, I want more people to experience it. Bring it on! I'll give you a little kiss. Now would be a perfect time to do it too, since the first two games got ported to the Switch, and the third game is coming out this year. 
I'm super excited for No More Heroes 3. I've been having such a blast replaying these games on the Switch. They've been my happy place in this hell world we live in now. Kinda fucked up that brutally murdering people is my happy place, but eh. As Travis Touchdown once said, Some people fuck at funerals. I end videos abruptly.